please raise, rise and pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting, uh, October 30th, 2017. We'll start with public comment period. Anybody here to make public comment? Please come forward. State your name and address. Good evening, uh, Barbara Renault, 37 Toll Farm Road, and Chair of the Conservation Commission. <clears throat> I'm here on behalf of the Conservation Commission to speak to an item in your old business uh, section further on in the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, we I have uh, submitted a memo to you uh, recommending uh, that there be no sale or lease of town-owned marshland. Um, and we explained the reasons why. I also spoke at the October 2nd public hearing on this issue um, in opposition to that sale or lease. And I'm here again just to emphasize the Conservation Commission's uh, position on that issue. Um, we know we are already having vehicles damaged uh, by salt water uh, along the marshes and that we are also having streets that are impassable during high tides down in the marsh areas. Uh, the, the marsh is our water storage area, whether it's fresh rainwater, tidal water, or storm surges. And uh, to the extent that we fill any even small piece of that storage area, that marshland, uh, we are forcing that water to go somewhere else and jeopardize other properties. So that's the reason um, we, be, we feel strongly about this issue. Uh, we know that in the past, many things were done, uh, and there was filling that had been done, but that was before we had the current science. <clears throat> right now, I believe they say sea level is rising since 1990, sea level is rising three times faster than it was prior to 1990. So that's an accelerating process, so we can anticipate a faster level in the future. In Hampton, at Hampton Harbor in the past 20 years, that's been three inches, but in another 60 years, that's a foot. And you put high tide and storm surge on top of that, and it's a lot of water. Um, so we are asking you to, um, we have hoped to give you a good informed recommendation on this and ask for your, uh, your consideration. Thanks. Thank you very much. Anybody else for public comment? Seeing none, we will go to announcements and community calendar. Regina? Um, just tomorrow night, Hampton has trick-or-treat, so please be careful if you're out driving. There will be kids of all ages running around the streets trying to uh, get some candy. <laughs> Rusty? <laughs> yes, uh, we know every, there was a lot of uh, storm and wind damage just uh, uh, last night and today. We know there's also a number of people that are still without power in town. Uh, I just a few minutes ago talked to the police chief. He's still in contact with UNITIL. Uh, they are diligently working to get it done. However, there, there could be some parts of town that could be up to two days without power still. So uh, just try to be, please be patient. Uh, if you have any concerns or, or problems, um, you know, continue to try to call uh, UNITIL. Uh, if uh, you have any other concerns, I would suggest that you can uh, talk to the uh, police department. If you, if you have no place to go, I am sure they will. They can uh, at least have a warming station for you. But again, just be patient. Uh, you're going to have to wait. We're all waiting. I know I don't have power yet either. So, which part is going to be a couple of days? Well, it could be all, the lower part of uh, uh, High Street in uh, North Shore. I know Jim doesn't have power. I don't. But I'm up on Toll Farm Road, and there's a section up there that doesn't have power. So there, there's a number of sections around town that still don't have power, and they're working on it hard, but it's just going to take time. If you, if you had a chance to see the weather or the news tonight, you'll notice that we're not the only part of the state that got hit. The whole state got hit. 
and they had a lot of flooding up the country. So everybody's working hard and just try to be patient. Yes, I just was noticing that there wasn't there was power on Kings Highway and yet there isn't power on Ocean Boulevard. So it's it's aggravating to these people and I had several people call me before I came tonight. <clears throat> and one of them did ask about if there uh, was a uh, a center, but I said we haven't opened one up and I'm just, you know, I don't think it's necessary where it's not as cold as it would be in the winter time. Um <clears throat> So I feel bad for these people. Um, and I guess we're going to be talking tonight about the uh, tell when we're going to have the pickup on the leaves. When is that going to be? Uh, um, a lot of people have asked me about that. <clears throat> it's the uh, yeah leaf pickup 2017 will begin the week of November 13th. So I know a lot of people are looking to hear about that. Thank you. And uh, I'm happy to report that my wife just texted me, and I do have power. Oh. <laughs> so the end. Of I haven't got that text yet. Yeah, so. yeah. So that's a happy to report that. And I wanted uh, ditto what uh, Regina said. You know, tomorrow's Halloween. Drive safely. Don't rush any place. There are a lot of children out, and they're our best resource. Remember, they'll be paying our Social Security to keep us going. <laughs> so you don't want to injure any of them. So be safe, please. And the rec department, I guess, had a great uh, Halloween event. Was it Friday night or Saturday night? Friday night. Friday, Friday, Friday night. night. A lot of uh, children attended, and they really thought it was successful. Okay, let's move on. Uh, we have one appointment that was canceled. Christine Pulliam. I know your name, but it says Christine here, so I just read what I have. Okay. <laughs> to do the September financials. You guys should have gotten them in your box about a week or so ago. Well, on the 16th, so a little over a week. So. Uh, let's see. It's the ninth month of 2017, and the expenditure target is 75%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the differences in revenue from 16 to 17. The 17 revenue is slightly below target at 74.56% and above the 2016 actuals of where we were in September last year. The month's total income was $478,938. Of that, motor vehicles came in at 264301 which is under the month's target by $34,307. The other major contributors to the month's total were interest on taxes at $11,624, building permits at $17,689, departmental income at $65,316, parking lots at $30,759, Sale of town property at five thousand dollars, interest on taxes at or interest on deposits. I'm sorry, we already did interest on taxes. Interest on deposits at twenty two thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars. District court fines at thirteen thousand nine hundred and thirty seven, and the real estate trust at forty five thousand seven hundred and sixty three dollars. On the expense side, you will find that we are under budget by five hundred and thirty seven thousand six hundred and twenty dollars or two point one eight percent in September of 2016 expenses were seven hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and eighty six dollars or two point nine six percent under the month's target and this month I'm going to go through and tell you what percentage each department is at under general government the town manager is at seventy one point six four percent the town clerk is at 71.16. Finance is at 71.51. The tax collector is at 69.32%. Assessing is at 48.32%. MIS is at 64.23%. Legal is at 112.63%. Planning is at 68.65%. Zoning is at 59.78%. 
Cemetery is at 71.17%, and parking administration is at 94.18%. The police department is at 71.9% when you include their open purchase orders. The fire department is at 66.9%, including open purchase orders. The building department is at 65.3%. <coughs> Public Works Department is at 76.2%. And I'll point out there that they currently have uh, $330,020 in open purchase orders. So that's a driving factor there. So they probably, without that, they wouldn't be under tar, they wouldn't be over the target. Welfare is at 54.64%. Parks and Recreation is at 73.23%. The library is at 73.27%. Conservation is at 68.32. And under the Warren articles, activity levels have increased and projects are getting done. Uh, the special revenue funds, uh, Fund 24, the recreation has a balance of $154,762, which includes 18374 that have been uh, donated through the Beach Sticker Program. And fifteen thousand three hundred and one dollars, which has been awarded in scholarships. Fund twenty five, the cable committee has a balance of three hundred and ninety seven thousand three hundred and ninety eight dollars. Uh, fund twenty six, private detail has a balance of one hundred forty two thousand one hundred and sixteen. Fund twenty seven, the EMS fund has a balance of six hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and six dollars. On the wastewater system development charge, the fees collected in 2017 total $110,778 with a balance um, in this account of $195,825. We do, ha and I just made a note there that the board has approved $56,822 worth of projects from that. And I think that's all. Questions, Regina? Uh, no questions. So we're still slightly under target in some major areas. You foresee those probably getting closer to, uh, like, for example, fire department? Uh, yeah, I think after this month will be a true, after I do the um, October financials, we'll have a better picture of where we're at because I think things really slow down. But in October, I think we still had some stuff going on, you know, and I know uh, the fire department just got approval for two purchases I think the last couple of weeks so I think there'll be some movement in there and also uh, Fred and I were actually talking about this today that we have to remember in November all of the um, holiday pay and um, education incentives are paid to mostly fire and police there are a few other and other departments so that's a big chunk of those two budgets so um, I think that when I do the October financials, we were going to kind of look at those items and kind of project out what we expect those to be so we can get a better picture of where the departments are at. Okay. Thanks, Christy. Great job. Also, excellent. No. Thank you for your report. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any chance? Yeah, I didn't even move. I'm I sitting know right here waiting patiently. <laughs> um, motor vehicles, is that the second month that's been under? I believe so. Slightly under, yes. So is that a, is that a it's trend? Been flip, it's been flip flopping, I think. Okay. Um. So, right. but we're still over where we were in sixteen overall. So, I think even for motor vehicles, we're yeah. In September of two thousand and sixteen, we were almost two hundred thousand lower than where we are now. Okay. So even though we're under the target, I think some of it is driven by the fact that I've been adjusting. Uh, the revenue budget throughout every quarter this year, like the auditors had suggested. So with that being a moving target, I think that throws us under, but we're still over where we've been in prior years, okay. if that makes sense. And you're staying on top of the, the departments that are over? I mean, yes. not many, but you're staying on top of them with, with what's happening and yep. where they're going to be. Good. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, yeah, good. Thank good. you. Okay. I'll be back later. All right. Hey, Jim, just so you know, uh, other people in your neighborhood have got their power back, too. All right. Yvonne Good. just called and said that she got it, her power back. So. <laughs> so it's coming, slowly but slowly, surely. Sure. Be patient. All right, next, Kathleen Murphy, superintendent, and Nathan Looney, business agent. I guess you could stood up.
<laughs> yes, I did. Nathan's um, busy working on the budget uh, and preparing the final numbers for our school board, which will start deliberations in, uh, next week. So, but they'll get their budget this week. So, um, anyway, that's where he is. Uh, so he uh, sent me off on my way to talk to you. Thank you for the comments about Halloween. You know, 1,100 plus kids out in the streets and. You know, they love Halloween. It's one of their most favorite days, and they enjoy it. We just have to all remember to be safe, and I, I appreciated your comments. Uh, the good news is that schools will be open tomorrow. All of our schools have power, and so we expect to have all those bright, shiny faces with us tomorrow morning. So Super. today was, as you know, a closure. We had hoped to get in with a delay, but um, when uh, we knew that Unitil could not get to any of the power lines, because of the wind was still a factor in the morning, then I had to reverse my decision and, and go with the closure. So that's what happened this morning. I'm sure all the students were heartbroken this morning. I, uh, I, Monday morning, I, I'm Well, sure. yeah, when I, when I got into town this morning, I obviously rode around, checked our buildings to see if there was any damage or anything like that. And I saw some of them, they were already out in their shorts, yeah. you know, like it, was a, <laughs> like it was a summer day. But it wasn't quite a snow day. It huh? wasn't quite a snow day, but that's who they are, right? So, uh, yeah, that was a surprise for everybody. So, anyway. I'm here tonight. I, I sent a letter off to you um, a, a little bit ago, about a month ago, I guess. And, um, you know, we've been doing this every year, and it has been such a wonderful um, extension of our school by having the opportunity to film and film events and, um, and educational programming. You know, some of it is adult-related. Um, we've had early childhood programming. Uh, John Judson, our media uh, coordinator, is now looking into some educational programs from like Discovery Ed and PBS and what we can and we can't broadcast, but we think those will be beneficial. Right now, all of our first and second grade teachers are preparing to read uh, afternoon stories to the kids. You know, they love to go home, see their teacher, and also get a, a good uh, a reading uh, from a good piece of literature. So. It's been wonderful. Uh, we, we've actually extended ourselves this year. John, as you know, is on the um, committee, the uh, cable committee. But in addition, uh, we, he did some work with Public Works this year, did some videoing for them for some projects that Chris wanted to have done. So I was particularly pleased about that because it's not the schools in the town or the Public Works. It's all of us together, working together. So whenever we have a chance to do that with the town, and, and be a part of all of the business, uh, that's really been our goal. So we uh, did a little bit of that this year, so I was pretty pleased about that. We've asked that, um, as, in, as we have in the past, um, we've asked for um, 30, I gotta make sure I have my number right here. Uh, $38,000. $21.32, and um, basically that will cover the costs, our personnel costs for, um, for, for, for John Judson, who works uh, in all of our schools and in the evening to record and do all the video and all of that. Uh, and then another addition of $8,700 for equipment. And you'll notice in the equipment list, um, it was really around replacing things, microphones and getting quality microphones because one of the one of the um, criticisms is is that people sometimes don't hear the messages clearly so we wanted to improve on that so you'll see in in the list uh, we have microphones you'll see some additional memory and hard drives the one big item that we're asking for this year is a handheld camcorder so that um, it's much easier to go out uh, when John's out on field trips when he's out and about in the schools, it's a lot easier, especially if it's an activity, to have the cam handheld camcorder than it is to have the, the big heavy camera on a, tri uh, a tripod. So, tripod. So. Uh, any questions? Any? Yeah. So, you request the third just to come out of the uh, franchise yes. fee fund? Yes. I have no questions. I have none, but I also um, I want to. And I hope you guys, and I, I know I talked to Nate before, and he came up with some prices, but have a, over the next five years or so, have a, a plan. I know you've got a lot going on, and, and uh, we want to make sure that you're, you're, the studio, the new one you have, is, is equipped. And so, so, so we can look at the future. 
as it holds and see what there is. Right. We, we, as you know, in the, in the project, built in the project will be the ability to record uh, and film live. For instance, uh, I've, I've, I've talked to uh, Fred and, and to Jamie about using the auditorium for your deliberative sessions, for your, your budget. All that equipment we've met twice already. I actually have another meeting this week so that we can get some numbers and prices and really kind of begin to hone it down. So I will have that for you. It's, it's a great opportunity right. that while we're building it, we to right. have that media part there. And there will be a studio that, you know, a, a smaller area. Our school board will have their meetings there now, and, and we won't be always trying to take days from, I know, your busy schedules. Um, but the auditorium will be um, all rigged so that we can video um, live as well as record um, uh, productions or whatever, meetings. We know we've had state meetings. Uh, I know that last year there was some, you know, meetings around um, the fishing industry at the beach, and there, there's opportunities to use that facility, and that, was, that has been our goal. There isn't, we have a community room, as you know, that stayed in the project, which everyone was pleased about. That one will not, does not have at this point um, video capability, but with the equipment that John has, we easily can, can uh, broadcast any event that's held in there, because that's a smaller room, that's about 1,200, 1,300 square feet. Well, it'd be good to have that, we already have, you know, that's what that fund is for, so we might as well, you know, at least have, I know we have some some upgrades here that we need to do too, but we should be. Well, if you know John <laughs> Judson, our media um, media uh, guru, if you will, um, John doesn't miss a beat, you know, and so he's been on it, uh, working with a company out of Concord right now. And, I'm going to uh, make the motion for the thirty-eight thousand to twenty-one dollars and thirty-two cents. Good. Do you have any questions? No. All right, I do. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second his motion. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, you, it, that's a great job, and Channel 13 is really good. And I really think, yeah, I was the one that pushed to have the 100% of the franchise fee go into the fund, and the reason was because that to upgrade Channel 22, who's doing a super job on it, on these guys who are working on their budget and getting it together, and the school also, to get up to where the towns are. A lot of towns are have have really quality uh, broadcasting and they have because of the equipment they have they have the quality right. broadcasting and I think it, it's really very important for us to do that so I'm glad you're getting it together and you know that this whole program has become very contagious right the kids are absolutely incredible um, John does take time to work with them and they have become so proficient in production they do shock news as you know at, at the middle school but in addition to that now they're out now and just filming and we actually have one of our teachers who um, will be presenting at a national technology conference on the kinds of skills that our kids in Hampton have learned around media production it, it they're incredible um, they took a field trip down to uh, NECN news the last NBC Boston the last two years and right into the studio with all the broadcasters with all the production people and they were like incredibly impressed and, First of all, they knew all the equipment, they knew how to use it, and it was just a really positive experience, and they were very impressed by this, by our students' ability in that area. So it has become contagious in a, a very popular area that our it's kids It's a real educational tool. I, had a, a, I used to do that in the school I used to teach. I used to run a news program with the students, and one of my former students went to, has been now in three major metropolitan areas. He's now down in Dallas as an anchor. So he it really is a, a education. I could talk positive. about this for a long time. Yeah. One last comment All is right. those students who gain an incredible amount of self-confidence. One, by simply being filmed, mm -hmm. you know, if John has an event, and their ability to get up in front of the camera and speak clearly and, with, and, and not be, you know, nervous. And, uh, and, and then the confidence they grow as they write script and produce, produce shows. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a wonder, wonderful Okay, all in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Unanimous? Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Good to, Good to see you. Next, Robert Landry, New Hampshire Department of Transportation, uh, to give us some information on the Hampton Harbor Bridge repair. And if you'll both introduce yourselves, please, when you sit down, that'd be nice. How about like turn the screen on? Uh, please come to the door right now. Uh, 
he may be in the back one. Oh, is he? He may be. This one. You can have it. There you go. You have a using for a memory stick? It's already on there. It's already on there? Yeah, we already loaded it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Not coming up. Is there a button we got to do to switch it over? Brian? That doesn't look like this. No. Brian! <laughs> Slideshow just so we can have it ready. It's probably F5 or something, but I don't want to put it on. It's not working for it. It's not showing on the screen. There we go. There you go. Hey, I'll get this lock out here. Um, yes, I'm Bob Landry. I'm with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation in the Bridge Design Office. I'm the administrator of it. To my left is Jennifer Rizek. She's one of the new project managers and actually has the the future Hampton Harbor Seabrook Campton project to address the current bridge. Uh, my effort is really more focused on a repair necessary due to um, a couple in that failed, as you guys probably know, last July. Yeah. So this project is just for that. We're trying to make sure that the opening of the bridge is on um, is on when we want it and that it's pretty self secure and it will work well until the project in 2023 a little bit about the existing bridge you guys probably know a lot about it already it was built in 49 13 spans 1200 feet long um, and it's a bascule in the middle next uh, as you know, on July 11th, we had trouble with the coupler. Basically, the teeth between the two halves of the coupler wore so that it was no longer engaging. Um, we went out there on the 12th and the 13th with our bridge maintenance crews, and they did some um, temporary repairs to get it to open, um, and these are considered temporary fixes. This is a picture of the area looking at the bridge upstream. And here is the actual machine repair and then the bascule span itself. Um, this is a picture of the failed coupler. It's the one on the left with the arrow coming down. And then this is with all the guides off it when the guys are in there working, trying to get it working again. And the next picture is showing the actual coupler. And then this is the work that they actually did they welded the oh yeah there's a pointer here right did he say it was i guess i'm wrong i can't remember whoops uh -oh. whoops wrong button try again all right um so we welded the plates across the top basically getting rid of uh, the flexibility of the coupler uh right now well go ahead it's all in here so this was temporary we're trying to do the permanent repairs to the machinery like i said so that it's operational and consistent until we get the new bridge in there which we're hoping to be in 2023 but we start that effort um, we're going to replace both couplers while we're in there to do the work um, when these couplers come we actually need to take the shafts out send them to the machine shop with the coupler and then get them placed together and a lot of the construction access will be from barges or directly from the bridge. This is a catalog cut from a potential coupler. There's a couple manufacturers of them. Uh, we're looking to advertise the project uh, next Tuesday uh, with the bids opening in November, the end of November, um, and then going through the governing executive council process we should be able to give the contract a notice to proceed by mid-January. Um, we're trying. We're actually purchasing the couplers through our bridge maintenance folks, so that we can hurry up the process, not wait until that mid-January date. 
It's a 14-week lead time is what we're told on the cup was. We're hoping for them through that other process to be done in, in place or in our hands by February 16th. So that would allow the work to begin no later than February 20th. Uh, work requires the basket span to be shut down, so it'll be in the down position. So cars will be able to go across, but the lifting of it won't be possible during those time frame. Uh, working with our movable expert consultant on that, a movable bridge expert, the contract has 14 days to do this work. It could be 24-7. It is kind of a tough time of year to work 24-7, to put it nicely. Uh, and like I said earlier, the shafts will be removed from the site and shipped to a machine shop to do the work. Project schedule, um, shafts will return, they'll assemble it, and the work will be done, completed by no later than March 9th. So then the basket will work. We won't have any issues with the um, vessels coming in and out that need the lift. And completion of that, the overall project will be March 23rd, any cleanup work. And it's estimated at 600000 which is a little bit of a... Um, an estimate because we don't typically do this type of work as far as impacts to traffic during the 14 day period as I said the bridge will be in a down position but it won't be able to lift from marine traffic uh, work barges may te temporarily impact the horizontal clearance of the marine channel they'll have to work with the boat is using that and there could be a couple of temporary lane closures for the New Hampshire 1A work to bring in the couplers and all of the other and then there'll be some testing time to get, make sure it works. Uh, we have done a bunch of coordination with Coast Guard, the Marine Patrol, Emergency Services. Uh, met in Seabrook right after we got the uh, bridge back open and had the fishing community come in along with the Port Authority. Any questions on either this project or the potential new project? Regina. Um, so the bridge is going to be down for, you said, approximately two weeks? Yep. And you don't know whether it's going to be all day or not? It'll be all day. Okay. All the, right. But the bridge will be open to tra vehicular traffic, correct? Correct. But not marine. But not marine. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I like the the, uh, the modern picture you have in the here. That's, <laughs> that's a great postcard. Um, no, I think it's probably the best time of the year to do it. It's probably not the best time of year to work on it. I'm sure the middle of summer would be a nice time to work on that bridge. But for the boat traffic and everything else, I think it's going to be a, the minimum for them as the best they can. Uh, as long as you've notified them and they will know. So if they have to, they can, they can keep their boats at another facility for a couple of weeks. I think that's the biggest thing is getting out and making sure that the people know about it. And, and you're saying the, the new bridge won't be till 2013? 2023. I mean, 2023, 2023, right. Yeah. So we're talking another five years, roughly five, six years away for that bridge. Yes. Uh, have they decided on the design of that bridge yet? No, that project's actually going to be starting up after the first of the year. We're working to get the consultant on board right now and through the governor and council process. So we'll be looking to engage um, a public advisory committee starting in the spring. And we're looking for representatives from the town of Hampton to be part of that committee, and that will kind of inform the design as we go through that process. Uh, so, are they thinking of a high enough span so they don't have to have a lift in it? Is that, that is one of the alternatives that we have scoped right now. There are three alternatives that we're looking at as part of the preliminary engineering. Um, one would be a rehab of the bridge that's out there today. Um, there are some concerns with the we redecked it back in 2010, um, but the girders themselves need some work. There's also the pedestrian and cyclist piece that we're looking at. Um, that's a big piece of this project and how to accommodate those users. So we will look at the rehab and how that could be accommodated. And we're looking at two different replacement options. One as a movable bridge. That will probably be on a slightly raised profile, kind of looking at the boats that come in and out and seeing if there's an elevation that will minimize the disruption to traffic. And then the third option is 
sort of the high level, so elevated up to whatever the Coast Guard would require so that it would be a fixed structure. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Rich? It, is it um, the timing that you have set aside to be closed for the two weeks, is that definite? Uh, so that the people will definitely be able to make a plan for that particular time, or is it a possibility that it's going to be a different time? Uh, we'll know better in the next week or so mm -hmm. when we actually place the order for the coupler. Right now we're going through the process of purchasing it. Mm -hmm. um, once that is placed, we'll then know the end date that they'll get it to us, and that could slide that forward or back. I don't think it'll go any farther back. We're trying to be conservative in our times. When we talk to, to vest, the marinas, or not the marinas, but the boat users earlier, that was a good time. We weren't sure we this temporary fix would last that long. We wanted to do it in November, December, and they were a little less comfortable with that. This was mm -hmm. a time, as long as we get out there before the opening of um, saltwater fishing, and mm -hmm. I believe last year was April 15th they'll be happy okay great sounds like they're on board with the timing yeah the only question i have is the same as rick that this is all have been coordinated and regina coordinated with the fishing community there and the vessel owners and stuff that they've all been taken into consideration and one question i have and i don't know if it would just increase the cost tremendously but is there any way that you could replace the shaft also so that you were buying a shaft and coupling and then they were brought in as one unit rather than taking the shaft out and sending the shaft to us so that would, would that speed up speed the time up. frame i i think they looked at that in that the shaft still in the piece it's fitting into would have to be still machined to fit perfectly into that i believe is the case i can check on that and yeah let I, you know for sure it seems if you could bring it all in as one unit that uh, it might be quicker I think to take it out and put it in if we go back whoops Wrong way. I think it fits into the the other piece of the machinery. Oh, okay. Is the issue. Okay. So you yeah. need it to be machined for both ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those things you got to do it. It's got to be closed sometime when you do it, so it's a shame. But okay. Uh, Fred, do you have any questions? No. You set? I'm set. Yeah. I just hope the weather cooperates. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's a good time of year. It is. The snowman. Right. I also have a, a municipal agreement. If you guys want to sign it, I we understand it's all state roads, but okay, okay. Do we need to vote on signing it, or do we not want to sign it, or you got to read it first? Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to leave it, I will. Yeah, and we'll have legal look at it and then yep. Yep, decide. I think it's right. probably just a standard agreement. Yeah. Yep. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for coming in. And if you can move that 2023 up, that would be real nice. Oh, let's see what we can do. 2019. <laughs> yeah, 2019, 2020 would be nice. Well, we're having very similar problems on the Newcastle Ride Bridge right now, so I'm oh, sure yeah. that's kind of helped set that date. Do you want it up here or back there? Uh, yeah, put it up here. And Make sure it gets distributed properly. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Charlie Preston. Snow, flooding, parking at Hampton Beach. Welcome. No snow yeah. this year. I, uh, my purpose was to talk to you about the Ashworth Ave parking lot in front of the police station to make it more user-friendly to our residents, taxpayers of Hampton. Um, this, this lot is, like I said, directly in front of the police station. It's called the Veterans of World War II at Ashworth Ave. Um, this is of Section 8055, which we have today, in existence today. And it's the, that lot and the Island Path Municipal Lots for Off Street Parking of Personal Vehicles shall be allowed only during the hours of 1 p.m. to 7 a.m. of the following day between the dates of November 15th and March 15th of the year. <coughs> Last year, this lot was plowed, but most of the time it was also locked. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to make much sense to me. 
Um, what I what I would like to pos you know what I'm proposing is to Im implement an odd and even parking system, which would work for both the plow operator, the resident parking, and also help the DPW by getting cars off the road. When you go in that lot today, like today the police had an issue where they were, you know, they, they come down F Street and they go straight across through that lot and they have their own gate and they can win. What I'm proposing is where their booth is, the north side between that booth and Brown Ave. When plow, I, I plowed for years, so I'm very familiar with doing it commercial and I you know, plow around the clock when it snows. That's pretty much just, I did it in the private sector, but same way the DPW goes. You go when it snows. Time of day doesn't make a difference. That lot was always plowed. They push all the snow to the perimeter of that lot to the fences all the way around. In the middle of that north side, there's actually two islands of existing parking there now that consist of about 36 spaces. You have, the, you have a row up in the back of the police station fence, then you have an island of about 36 spaces, another row, another island of 36 spaces, another island, and then the perimeter to the fence, you know, parking on the front. So, you also have down there, there's 48 barrels, because this isn't the first time I've proposed this odd and even parking system, and I think if that we tried it, it would work for people, and we could do this without spending any money. I think you'd find it would work well, and you might find other places in town that's, that would also be a good fit. Right now, there's 48 barrels along the fence on Brown Ave that come from the Hampton Beach, the very heavy cement barrels. When I'm proposing those two islands is take, say, 20 of those barrels and line up five on each end, you got 36 feet, one on each corner, one in the middle, and, and half again. So it would clearly identify where people would park in between those barrels on both front and row, on both front and back. What you're doing, the only thing you'd have to sign at that net would be the, the odd and even. On even days, you park on the east side, so you can remember by double E. And on the west, you could do on the odd days. Obviously, if you've got an emergency, you know, you might let, you might let it go for the day. But well, like what I said to you where I plowed, this works because the plow can still get to the perimeters where everything was put. We've got a flooding situation down there. We're going to have more parking than ever. You know? I guess you have an 8059 that allows for parking. You're giving placards out. And it says it's when tides are over 10 foot. Well, tides are over 10 foot now, about 10% of the year. Today's tide was actually only an 8.1. But because of the rain and the storm surge, it was close to a 10. You also look at the tide chart. And um, you see a lot of nine eights and nine nines. You throw rain in there in any kind of an east wind. This is something going forward that's going to be happening a lot. So I'm just I'm trying to be proactive without spending any money. But you also by doing the odd and even system, you, you you're getting rid of any abandoned cars or inoperable cars. But you're also assisting people in the DPW will be getting cars off the road. And I don't understand, I, you know, I, I think this will work, but I also think that there's no need for people to have to leave there at 7 in the morning. Make it noontime, you know, that they switch from one side to the other every day. Because if you're in the middle of a big storm and you've got to get up and move that car by 7 o'clock, you're going to have to shovel, you're going to have to get down there, you know. There's no need of it. They're not, they're not in anybody's way. So... I, I'd like you to, to, you know, consider this, or, you know, whether you can take a vote on it, whether you want to think about it. I'm sure the police, fire, public works, and the power operator is probably the most important of the whole, the whole deal. That would say, I can, I can do this. You know, Chris, the public works director, I can't speak for him, but I, I've talk, talked to him about this before, and he said, Charlie, we can do this. You know, we can make this work. But I think that where we plow that lot, it should be open all time to the residents of Hampton and the taxpayers of Hampton. And going forward, we need these spaces for the, for the flood issues. You know, people will go down there if they know they can get plowed out without interfering with the plowing operation. 
it's a win-win for everybody. And you might find that going forward, you might find out that you'll start doing it in the other lots. I also talked to Meredith Collins. There's a state parks meeting coming up. I think it's a couple Thursdays at the beach. And they do plow that lot. They've get, they're getting better at it, you know. But when I mentioned the odd and even, she goes, that, she goes, that makes sense. And they're going to consider it's going to come up at the meeting down there where they can do it because it helps the guy that has to do the plow by getting people out of the way every other day. And also just a little community announcement. we got some tides coming up next week, you know, from Saturday the 4th till um, Tuesday. we got a 10-2, a couple of 10-4s, and a 10-5. And when you see anything over a 10, you look at the wind direction and you look at the rain event because all of a sudden those can become 11 foot tides and um, for those that are not that familiar with it a lot of people are today and, and going forward is more, people are more and more in tune with it you know in Hampton Harbor tides and they are bang on they'll tell you the the how low tides high tides they're right on the money the only thing you've got to do is add look for the east wind and look if there's a rain event because then it can be it can run much higher and it can also run later. It could be an hour later because that water just keeps coming. So I would gladly entertain any questions if you didn't understand just what I'm trying to do there in, the, in those two areas because they're actually islands. We're away from the perimeter where you know we have a history of where the snow has, go, has been going. So there's, there's no change to that. And, and there's plenty of area for a guy to, uh, to do this without making his job any harder. It would be a great thing all the way around. You know, let's let's start this small and make this work for the residents, taxpayers. It also it also helps out police, fire, and public works. Thank you very much, Regina. Um, I don't have any questions right now. I mean, it sounds like a good idea, but would we have to get like maybe public works, police, fire, to all uh, weigh in on it? Yes. I, it's like you said. It sounds good, but I think yeah. we need to hear from them too. So it worked fine as long as we don't have a lot of snow. Right. If we have a lot of snow, then we have to bucket the material out because once it's pushed out to the edge of the parking lots, uh, you reach a certain point where you can't put any more out there, so you've got to put front end loaders in and start moving stuff, which makes it very awkward to try to do that. So, but you need to, I think Chris needs to come in and go over this and work up a schedule of how it can be done uh, because anything can be done if you want to do it. It just takes time and scheduling, that's all. Well, it takes time, it takes. It's going to take some money. It's not like it gets done for nothing. Oh, yeah. And we got to we got to make sure the time. And I, and I agree with Charlie that you know seven o'clock is a little early to require people out of there. But we should have the the odd even thing so that cars are not getting abandoned there all the time. I think one of the reasons it was set at seven o'clock is because <clears throat> we have to clear those lots first so people can get out, and then we have to go clear out cul-de-sacs, which we have to do with a lot of equipment. So we got cul-de-sacs all over town. That takes the rest of the day. But if, several days but if it was if it was the odd and even and they're only on one side you could push one in there they could get all out of there and then you could go back and clean it later. that works till day two yeah <laughs> oh i know <laughs> then you got to adjust you yeah. do have a history in here with the, the operation Rick? no i don't have any questions thank you charlie thanks for bringing up to us and it, you know good idea and I, I think we we will definitely have chris in we will definitely ask him yeah. well, we'll definitely have the town manager ask chris talk to the police chief and the fire chief and uh, that's the most expeditious way to do it. Yeah, yeah. We'll get back to you. All right. And I, you know, I, I, Chris told me I could talk to him. Jennifer said I could talk to him at all, and I will. But I just have to stress that you know, time is of the essence. Yep. Because November fifteenth is uh, right around the corner here. So, thank you very much. We can make this work, and for everybody, time flies yeah. too fast. Too fast. Not necessarily Thanks, Charlie. Have a fun. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Approval of the minutes, October sixteenth. 2017. I make a motion. Second. When was the 16th? That wasn't last Tuesday. No. No. Okay. <coughs> that was the week before. All right. So, okay. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the State Department of Natural and Cultural Resources Division of Parks and Recreation will host a community meeting on Thursday, November 9th, 2017, from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. at the CSHL 
Oceanfront Pavilion to discuss the two seven, 2017 season and winter operations at the seacoast. So open to the public, please go. The Department of Public Works has announced that the 2017 leaf pickup, and we seem to have had a lot of them come down today, will take place the week of November 13th. Please be sure that your leaves are in biodegradable uh, bags or loosely packed in large plastic containers so they can be dumped out. Please check with the, D the DPW website for complete instructions. Please make note that starting at 1 a.m. on November 15th, there will be no parking on any street in Hampton between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m. by ordinance. Please note that petition warrant articles affecting zoning must be filed with the Selectman's Office not later than November 13th, 2017, excuse me, not earlier than November 13th, 2017, and not later than one month later or December 13th, 2017. As well as please note that petition warrant articles for all other subjects uh, other than zoning must be filed with the Selectman's Office by the close of business on January 9th, 2018 or with the Selectman before the end of January 9th, 2018. The last day to file a petition warrant article containing bonding is January 5th, 2018. And uh, we have a vacancy effective November 16th. 2017 of the Hampton Beach Area Commission, appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Anybody who is interested in that should talk to a selectman or should send the information to the selectman's office for their re review and approval. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Questions? I have no questions. Thank you. No. Rick? No. Could I just have one. Sir. Not a question, but could you just explain briefly? Sure. What a citizen's petition article is, so people know, warrant article is, so people Good. know how they can do that. Good point. Read, uh, first of all, if, if you have the opportunity, go to RSA 39, and, and there's a section in there about citizen's petitions, and that may explain it. You could look at it and study it for a while. Basically, a petition is, is a warrant article, uh, and if you have a question about what an order, warrant article is, look at the warrant for the previous year's town meeting in the town report. It's on the colored pages. That warrant article is devised by the person who writes the article. Uh, it's, it <clears throat> basically tells it, the town what the article seeks to do and how much it's going to cost, if anything. Uh, the article has to be signed by 25 registered voters. And they have to be registered in accordance with the registration on file with the town clerk. Once the article is submitted, and we, we suggest strongly that people get 35 or 40 people to sign each one, uh, People are a little shy sometimes about when you ask them, uh, would you sign my petition? They'll say, oh, oh, sure, not a problem. And we find out they're not registered voters. So you need to have a few extras because once you turn it in and the deadline date passes, you can't add to it. So you need to have the required number of 25 signatures. That's turned in to the selectman's office. It's then given to the town clerk to certify the signatures that are on the, on the petition. If there are 25, it is held in the selectman are required by law to place it on the warrant for the annual town meeting. And from there, the voters make the decision. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Anybody, Rick, anybody? No, anybody. What I wanted to ask is sure. um, when people have uh, debris from this storm, is that going to just be okay to leave it out there for when, as when they pick up the leaves? We don't. Leaves. The equipment we're using to pick the leaves up are the uh, regular trash trucks. Mm -hmm. They won't take branches and so forth. That's that's not possible. So uh, if the board, I'll talk to the public works director and see if we can't find a way for us to go around and pick them up. It's going to require an entire crew plus a front end loader and a large truck to pick up the, uh, the branches and a large section of trees and so forth. So I have to try to schedule that. Or people can bring them to the transfer station. We will take them there, that's for sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything <clears throat> else under old business? Uh, under old business. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, we got there yet. Oh, I'm sorry. New business. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It came awful fast. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Almost missing it all We're just getting there. <laughs> I can hold my business either way. 
Great comment. Old business. <laughs> vote pursuant to RSA 41 colon 14 dash A proceedings. Tax map 234 lot 3 off Winnicunit Road, Spring Marsh to lease town-owned property for parking for the property at 595 Ocean Boulevard. This is the, f we had two public hearings, right? You have, Mr. And we Chairman. we will be taking a vote on this tonight. That is correct, sir. Okay. This, the statute provides for two public hearings, two weeks apart, followed two weeks later by a vote of the Board of Selectmen to either confirm or deny the request. Okay. Have we heard from the gentleman? All right. We, um, I talked to town council today who'd been informed that supposedly we were supposed to receive something in the form of an explanation of what was being done, whether it be a loose hand-drawn plan or uh, uh, something in writing, and that has not been received as of today. I would say that if we haven't received anything, and that's what this board talked about two weeks ago, yes, sir. that we're going to have to send it back to them and until we get some plans. He's kind of tied our hands. But, but we have to vote tonight. Is that true? That is true. You've got you've got to have it. He has it. to start all over again, right? With the, he, uh, he can start all over again. Okay. It's not a yeah. not a matter of he's excluded from doing right. that. He can start this again anytime he wants to. Right. But he, you know, he hasn't got anything to us, and he was notified that he needed yes. to get. Yep. That's that correct. The board wanted some more information, and we we hadn't got anything. Right. In fact, he said, "Hey, well, you said, well, you told him so." So. Okay, do we have a, a motion to either approve or disapprove? Well, I would make a motion to disapprove. As of right now, we don't have a plan. Okay, do we have a second? All right, uh, Regina and Rusty, all in favor? That's Rick. I'm Rusty. Rick, I'm sorry. <laughs> Boy, I'm really off tonight. <laughs> I had no power all day. I'm confused. <laughs> it's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right, so it's been uh, disapproved. Right, but he can bring it back. He can start. He yep. can bring he can it, back. Start it back again. Yeah. He just we got we got to have some information. We got to we got to you know we got to know what we're voting on. Yep. Okay, we've already talked about the Hampton Beach Area Commission. The town manager put it in his report. The vacancy. Uh, I do have something about the Hampton Area Commission that they asked me to mention. Okay. Um, is they uh, asked that Mr. Welch. Uh, send a letter uh, before November 6 uh, you know with the support of the, voicing the support of the board for the bridge and for the continuing um, what's happening on Ocean Boulevard with the Hampton Area Commission the plan that's due to be started you know sometime between 2018 and 2024 <laughs> So what are you looking for? A, a letter of support to the uh, executive. To the commission? Consulars. Yeah. yeah, and it has to be there before November 6th. Not to the commissioners. The, to the governor and council? Governor council. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so. I think we, we should support. I think we should need to support the bridge and then getting that done. And I think... Uh, you know, we, we've said that, you know, we want to continue to see, work with them and and work on the plan to, to get the road done. Yeah, I told them the bridge was dear to your heart, Mr. Welch. Actually, it is. I'm the one who suggested that you appoint a committee in 2007 mm -hmm. to work on getting the bridge done. And I mentioned that you've talked about it many times. So I, and then they also said, could we also send a letter, uh, you know, stating the reconstruction also of the road? Yeah, the road needs to be done. There's no absolutely no question about that one. It has to be done. So you can just send a letter, right? Yeah. Well, I'll send a letter on behalf of the board, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll write it. I will send it to each of you. If any of you have some qualms with it or you want something else added, let me know, and I'll add it or take it out. Okay. One of the two. Okay, well, I think a letter of support is important. Good. Okay. okay. We shall do that. All right. That was it for your old business? All right. We're now uh, I do have some more old business. Okay. If it's under old business. Uh, I was uh, contacted by someone that lives at 971 Ocean Boulevard, and yeah, 
that I think is at the corner of Acorn, and they did something. They redid the road at Acorn or whatever. It was paved. Paved. Yeah. Well, since then they're getting two, like two inches of water, uh, that they did not have before. They said they've talked to uh, the DPW, and that he suggested that he has aerial uh, photography that shows that it's always been there. And they said it just isn't true. It hasn't always been there. And there's an elderly person, 80 years old, and a person even older than 80 that has a dementia issue that lived there. And I've got the pictures here. And What's the address? 971 Ocean Boulevard. 971 Ocean. They now appear to get up to four inches of water. And uh, that was not a constant before. That it started when they did the repaving of Acorn. Okay, I have to have somebody look. I know that the drainage in that area is not ours; it's the state's. I suggested that already. Yeah, and the that. state did attach that drainage across the street uh, onto our drain system without permission. And my understanding is that since the thing's never been cleaned, the state's portion has not been cleaned in a long time, that it is plugged. So maybe we've got to go up and uh, do the fire hose routine and, mm -hmm. and see what we can do to spring it up because there shouldn't be water in that area. Yeah, because the person that lives there has lived there a long time yeah. and is it's, it's in the real great. estate I mean, business. They said it just hasn't always been this way. Yeah. The road itself is, is on a grade. I mean, it should, it should run away and go down that drain. But if it's not, we'll find out why. Okay, great. Thank Good. you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> New business. Budget discussion. Oh. Final review. 2018 operating budget. Christy. Oh, Christine. Oh. <laughs> or Chris. Or Chris. Oh, or Mrs. Okay. Pulliam. So, well, finance director. Yeah. <laughs> First <Sorry>. in charge. It's <laughs> very late. Well, whatever. That's it. Thank you. I yes. All right. I will go over what I am passing out to you. Guys. Thank you very much. Basically, this is just summarizing all of the changes that you guys Thank have you. made so far, with a few changes that I have made for us to go over. And then once we do that, I hear you guys can lead the way on what your thoughts are in regards to the discussions you had last week and then previous week. So the first um, adjustment on here is just a typographical error in the regular wages under the town manager's office for the administrative assistant. It should have been in at 61000 in the original budget, and it was put in at sixty. So that's the nine hundred and. Um, Ninety dollars there. That was just an error that I hadn't caught in the past. Social Security, Medicare, and New Hampshire retirement system. Those are all under the personnel administration. Whenever any changes are made to any wage lines throughout the budget process, these lines will always change. So that's what that is. You guys had, when we get down further, you'll see that the be reminded that the public works director had offered up some cuts in his budget, and um, some of them, at least one. But two were in lines that affected wages, along with the correction that I just told you about in the town manager section. Those, that's where there's changes there. Gasoline and diesel, as we talked about all along the way across the budget, I've been monitoring those at the end of every month. So as of the end of September, yes, at the end of September, I had all of the gasoline gallons and did averages of where we were at, so I adjusted any lines that were needed to appropriately be adjusted based on the gallons used so far this year and projecting out. So any gasoline or diesel changes that you see on that sheet are literally just related to the fact that we said that we would continue to monitor those lines and make adjustments throughout the budget process. So we'll, hopefully we'll be given the ability to do that at the budget committee also. Um, health insurance. We talked about that last week. The rates came in at 10.5% uh, below what they were this year and obviously below what I projected because I never, I don't usually tend to project a negative number on that because it's very rare that it happens. So that health insurance line has been adjusted by 
41,000 as a result of the rates coming in lower than expected. Then you'll get into some just one line different items that the Public Works Department had offered up, the federal stormwater requirements. He had said that they had act, had the actual cost on that now, and so there was 10,000 savings there. Heating fuel, vehicle maintenance, waste tipping fees and waste hauling, those are all, um, when Chris was here before the board, he had offered those up. I think there were some motions to approve those cuts. So once again, this is just kind of, and then health insurance in the library. So. This is just kind of where we started when the budget came to you. Adjustments that you guys have made along the way, plus a few that I have made, hopefully on your behalf, if you want to approve them or not approve them, we can discuss that. Um, and then you guys had had a couple discussions last week on different wage lines and stuff, and I'm not sure where we're going with that, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of where we were at. So now we're at 3.25% uh, above the 17 budget. So, and I think we started at, I think Fred and I started at like six point something, and I think you guys started at 4.85, if I remember correctly. There's been so many versions, I tend to forget, but we keep shaving, so that's a good thing, in my opinion. <coughs> so, I'll turn it over to you guys to lead it wherever you'd like it to go. Questions, first of all? Uh, no, excellent job. Um, I've, I would like to make a motion to... Uh, make these changes if it's okay with everyone else yeah let's see if anybody has things to say no i think it's i think this is good i know we got a couple of items we have to yeah. talk about but this is a good start and it was thank you for okay yeah. the uh three hundred and forty one thousand. that's great yes but we have to next year we have no i mean that that's we not have no idea that's I not like when we can say wow that's really cool and it's going to continue for a while. Oh. You know, they don't go down very they, they don't go down we i've only known once in the past i have only known once that i can yeah, 25 yeah. years and it's actually gone down it's always yeah. gone up i mean so that, that's a great benefit for this 10%? year yes 10 percent. 10 and a half yeah. for those retirees out there that'll be a nice little you yeah, will and medical went down for the first time since I've worked here, and I started here in 1998. I've never seen the Medicom go down, which is what anyone who's on the Medicare is on. It actually didn't go down drastically, but it went down a little. Nice. So, so, so that 3.25, do you know what that would do to the tax rate, what the increase? Or, if you're not prepared, don't. don't. We were at 0.391. I should have looked that up. Sorry. Um, you guys want to talk about some other things? Let me see if I can roll that in here real quick. Right, what were the things we needed to do you want to vote on this uh, oh, we can vote on this yes she said that uh, in a motion i second okay, all in favor opposed all right unanimous this the other things we talked about were the uh non or the elected officials raises yes sir those the new position new, new positions. positions and then there was some non-union non-union stuff increases. and there was some increases from 10 to 14. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had given a sheet last week on that. I don't know if you guys still have that or... Too many sheets. Not um, showing the, all the different wage related items in your budget. I didn't make any copies, but we had, I had passed that out last week when I was when Jamie was here. Yes. Yeah, I was discussing it with you guys. That's right. Oh, boy. I wasn't, you know, voting good. I think I put it in your box. The three pages? Yeah, there was the three pages that broke down um, the different new positions that were in there. And then yes. the last page of that packet, I have a couple here. I don't know if you guys want to share. I don't have mine. Do you have yours? It's a problem with so much paperwork. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, if, one. if you guys want to look at the, do you have that? That's, isn't that it? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, but okay. he needs it. I don't know. Can you guys share for right now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have something to look at, too. Does Rick have? Oh, it's so okay. Mine, I can look at. I okay. probably have it on my computer somewhere. Thank you. But those were um, all of the different wage lines that had some type of an increase on them that was different from the 17 budget. So. The tax rate with 
I mean, without point three nine one, I think when I when we started, it would be better. So it would be point two six two for a thousand dollars. So on the on that sheet that you yeah. just discussed, yeah. if you were to do nothing else, but that would what that would be. <clears throat> so where do we, where do we want to start? You start with the elected officials. Yeah. These are pretty much all the elected officials, and then with the two percent. Two percent. Now, it, Christy, correct me if I'm wrong, but in my speaking with people and researching, we don't usually do anything with the elected officials. We did not last year. Last year, and, and I was yeah. told that in the past we haven't. Right. That they, if they put something in the budget, it's usually left at this level, and then sometimes changes are made. Okay. And otherwise, sometimes they go to warrant articles. They went more with what other people got this year on their raises. Yep. Rick, do you have a... a, a I feel I, I, I'm for them all being the same. I am too. I mean... I'll be the same as in I'll be in 3%. Um, I thought it was 1.65. That's what we did this year. 1.65 is what you granted to your employees right. who are this not union year. employees this past mm -hmm. year. Okay. In the budget, there's two. Right. In, in the budget, there was two. On the, no, on the merit, there was two on the merit line last year in the budget, but only 1.65 was granted. But on in the in the 18 budget that's in front of you, just so everyone is right. on the same page, the merit line in the budget does have two percent. It'll be up to the board to decide how. They want to distribute it, but that's what it's calculated at yeah. right now. Yeah. So. So you do this one of two ways. You could either amend last year's wage line by 1.65 percent, if that's what your desire is. Yeah. Or you could do absolutely video. nothing and put them into the merit pool. It's, so called. But as far as the elected officials and. You have to do something specifically for them. Right. 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 They both asked. I think there's only two, right? Town yes, clerk on the list there's two. Clerk. Yep, the right. town clerk. They and both the asked clerk. for 3%. Yep, and the planning office put in 3 and the conservation put in 1.5. But those aren't directly. They are not. Right, so I don't see why we would, for other elected officials, I don't necessarily think it's a good idea that we get involved like what could that be something that's done as a warrant article you're or? going to have to make a recommendation because it's in the budget right that's 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 my question I mean so two I, is it in there now three three okay I mean that's, but everyone else is 1.65 this year well, that's they, we're putting this in year. two for next year to, next to have year. that much to put in there but yeah my feeling is that you know if they put in three they put in three but if it's in the budget if it it's is, in a warrant article then it's then it's totally separate from right. us but it's not it's in the budget it's in the budget so therefore it should be two I, I would go with two okay I'll, I'll make a motion to I will second next motion any question unanimous two. is that going to be for the tax Town clerk, tax collector, the town planner, and the office administrator in the yep. planning? All of those positions I would are say in front of you there? I would say for the uh, conservation coordinator, too. No, it says requested. One and a half. They only that. request one and a half. Right. They're the ones that are in charge of that, not okay. us. Okay. Yeah, fine. Yeah. It's under your threshold, is what you say. Okay. So that's fine. Now we also have to deal with the new position in the town clerk's office, right? Oh, yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Yep, and that's not on this sheet. That was on the front, one of the front pages of the, your packet there. Um, so basically on that, there's two parts, so to speak. It's taking uh, the bookkeeper position in that department and making it into a senior bookkeeper. So that is in the budget for 39 weeks at a total of $2,676.85 and then creating a new full-time position for a town clerk assistant. The total cost for a year of that is $59,549.12 and for 39 weeks, which is what the 18 budget impact would be, it's $44,000. Six hundred and sixty-one dollars and eighty-four cents. Is that plus benefits? Yes, that includes everything. Yeah. That includes. I mean, everything. that's making an assumption on benefits, of course, because we don't okay. know. All right. Yeah. That's we usually do a two-person. If we know there's a new position, we've kind of always just put it in the budget as a two-person position. Yeah. Now. A two-person health plan. Let's go around. So, as far as the new, I know we were talking about last week. If there was a new position in the town clerk office, there would definitely have to be some. We'd have to set up a new window. There would be a lot of things that would have to be done, right? If that person was full time, we would have to have an additional space for them to work. Right. Okay. Right. Is this going to give us any more extended hours by putting a, a new person on? Is it going to open up Friday afternoons, or is it going to open up maybe a, a night here or there, or a Saturday morning? Uh, you know, if you know, I know we've had lots of lines up there. But he, I don't know of a DMV that ha doesn't have lots of lines. And, uh, I, I'm just, you know, if it's gonna, if it's gonna make the service better, then I, I don't have a problem with that. I just want to make sure that. I think the, the request was to have that new position be full time and to work full time during the hours that they are currently open. I believe that's how she presented it when she was here. But I believe that's correct. Yeah, I think so too. I will tell you there are a lot of complaints about the uh, hours. I, I've explained to what the situation is to everyone that's mentioned it to me, but I have heard a lot of flack. Mm -hmm. and it's not new. I've heard it before this year. Um, I've uh, mentioned to people that it's they're there earlier and later. But so people f have a hard time seeing another person and right. yeah, not have an extension of hours. My feelings, I'm 100% for this, but I'm 100% for adding people to the DPW. And I'm 100% right. that, that the fire department needs more people. And I'm 100% that the police department needs more people. And I know we can't afford it. And, you know, you know during the summertime, we have... What, one guy maybe that can do highway work sometimes? Everybody sometimes else is on trash? One person. Yeah. one person? That's that's a crucial uh, service that the town provides. So, you know, you know, just my feeling is that it should go to a warrant article. That That's my feeling. And if people want it, the voters want it, then they can vote for it. But if it's in the, you know, you know, and if, if the DPW wanted somebody else, put it in a warrant article. Okay. I mean, because I think we need we need employees all around this town. Mm -hmm. And DPW was, I mean, think of what they're doing in the summer. Oh, I know. Yeah, and I agree, too, also with what Rick said, with having another face there and still closing at 1130 on Fridays is going to It's hard to justify it. Yeah. yeah. I think we leave it for a warrant article. I would make a motion for goes to a warrant article. I'll second. Any other discussion on that? All in favor? Put in the warrant article. Okay. And then the other thing was in the legal. Did you guys vote last week on the paralegal nope. intern situation? I didn't think so. I thought we were waiting for Rusty to return, so. Yes, we were. Yeah. yeah. So in the, just to bring Rusty up to speed since he didn't see this packet, uh, Jamie was here last week. They, we had a discussion on the paralegal and the intern. Originally in the budget there was an intern position that rounds out to 
$5,399 for the year. The, at the administration level, the intern was removed and a paralegal was placed in the budget at um, part-time also for $28,074.80 for a full year and the 39-week impact was $21,056.10. So I just give the numbers. You guys can discuss your thoughts. <laughs> I think that department needs it. I think he's been working an awful lot. We've, we've asked an awful lot of him this past year. Um, I think uh, we've had an awful lot of outside counsel. And uh, if we had a paralegal that was, could do some of the groundwork and the legwork, it might help reduce some of that cost in other places. Hey, Mr. Welch, this is under your direction. What do you say? There are pros and cons to each. The, uh, the $5,000 individual uh, is only going to work in the summertime. And it's going to be doing exploratory work in different areas, taking care of administrative functions, miscellaneous functions, and so forth. Uh, the paralegal would work all year long and would do a tremendous amount of assistance to the town uh, attorney and probably shed off an awful lot of money uh, on, on these other folks that we have to hire out of house to do this work currently. And we're paying a premium for that, $200, dollars uh, per hour for some of these people to do this kind of work. Uh, probably the biggest benefit is gonna be from the paralegal. Uh, the uh, the part-time summertime employee is nice to have, um, but you can't have both. I got to put somebody in a seat someplace, and there's only one seat available part-time. Uh, the paralegal would give us more versatility. I agree. Um, I had, I think a paralegal is a good idea. Um, like you said. Uh, the costs we use on outside council fees right now, some of that could be eliminated. It could be actually someone that could sit there and do some of the reading or the research for Mark so that he could work on, you know, more important things. Um, is this the, this is, it says proposed wage changes. So is this already in the legal budget? Yes. Yes. Okay. So with this, the total. That one's actually, the paralegal position is actually in all of the figures that you've looked at tonight the intern was removed correct. correct we didn't vote on it no right. but it's on you passed it over it you have to vote on yes correct. or no yeah right. okay so it's part of the two hundred and forty thousand dollar total legal budget yes okay it is all okay. right Everybody, i'm against it divine melamint paralegal is not going to do the work they're doing the um uh, specialized assessors that we get for utilities and stuff like that, the paralegal is not going to do that work. If I was shown exactly how much money it was going to save from outside counsel, I would be for it. But I, and again, we're adding a position where we need positions all over the place. There are a lot of people in this town whom I feel are overworked and need help. And I, I, just my voice, my opinion. I'm I'm against it. Well, what about if we did it as a Warren article, like with the? It was a Warren line? article. Do that. Yeah, I could go with that. Well, maybe you need to make a policy that all new positions need to be Warren articles unless they're part time. We did that a few I years ago. I go for that. Well, this is part time. But. And well, I'm part time from the standpoint that it's not part time all year, continuous. Okay. okay, a continuous permanent part time employee. A temporary part-time employee or a part-time summer employee is significantly different. Right. I would go for that, and people got to get out there, and they got to they got to we got to sell them out, and they got to sell it that they are absolutely in need of this and and that. That's my opinion. I'll make that motion that okay. we go for it as a warrant article. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. So just to be devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're not leave, we're not putting the intern in either, right? Everything is out. That's that. right. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure we're very clear because we're not going to have a bottom line tonight after all this. But my thoughts when I was talking with Fred is if we could at least know that we're going to be under it already. The number that you were looking at because you just took out the town clerk and you took out the paralegal. Um, the budget committee meets 
on the 9th, I believe, for their yes. first review. So if we wait till next Monday for your final approval, we'll probably have some. So you're going to have. We're gonna do yeah, so I think that you might not have a bottom line tonight, though, because I can't type in and get all the benefit things. But as long as we know exactly what we're, what doing, we're doing, and it'll be less. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're all on the same okay. page. Right. Okay. Then the other item was on that last sheet in your packet, and it had all of those. Uh, the part-time labor positions that Jamie was discussing with you guys last week and it was basically positions that have already been in the budget there's no um, new positions that I'm aware of there Fred you can correct me if no, I'm wrong. There I think no they were all positions. there and if most of them are seasonal the majority of them are seasonal yeah I think they all are actually when I'm looking on it now and it's basically just trying to increase the minimum not minimum wage, I shouldn't say that, but the wage that they've been paying for all these years and they haven't been able, a lot of the departments were facing the same problem of not being able to fill the positions. And so um, I think it was at the administrative level along with DPW, we kind of came up with these increases that you'll see in the 18. So the total across all the departments, which include parking lots, parks and rec, and then a whole bunch in DPW, um, with FICA and Medicare, the total was $37,636. And those nut figures are in all of the information that you guys have had from the very beginning. But that was just the explanation. You guys had asked us to come right. back and kind of break it all down for you so you could see it. So we just tried to put it together all on one little chart there for you. Um, I don't have any questions on that. Thank you. Rusty? No, this is fine to me. I'm I mean, fine with that. I am too, because when you look at this, the wages are $9.97. Yeah. Right. <laughs> where? where the, nowhere. Nowhere. Not even my children who are like 18 and stuff when they yeah. got their first job. <laughs> right. I mean, so the highest paid person here is $12 an hour, and they're going to go to 12.36. Yes. And then the highest pay out of all the part time positions will be 14. And those are your laborers yeah. at like public yeah. works and stuff who are out on yeah. the back of the garbage trucks working in the sewer plant or doing highway work. So, I mean, they're pretty, they're doing uh, manual labor. Yeah, I mean, you know, for $14 is what we're proposing. Right. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we go with this okay. proposal. Second. Okay, all in favor? Good. Is that it? That's all I had, unless you guys okay. wanted to do anything else. No, I don't think. Do we want to talk about taking some money out of the... We already did. Yeah, you already did that. Well, that's that right. was for the tax rate, yep. We did that right, last right. week. How much did you do? We did $7 million. Dollars. <laughs> <laughs> 600000 600000 yeah. right. So what do you think our tax rate would be with that, yeah. that 600 I think last week I had that was to keep it. Um, no, it was slightly below. That was going to bring it a little bit below. Uh, six twenty something. Yeah, or? six twenty something. We did 61. the revenues and stuff. Um, I think I saw six twenty three today when I was doing my new revised estimate okay. after talking to DRA. Um, six twenty one. It was. Was it six twenty one last week? Last week, okay. I think. Yeah, we did. Um, yeah, we had to do revised revenues and stuff. I'm hoping to hear from the administrator at DRA tomorrow and wrap up the tax rate. She's working very hard on her no, end. I, I, so I read in the paper up. that New Market just did theirs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's almost two bucks. Yeah, they're up almost two dollars. Well, we're gonna with the six hundred thousand. I'm still fair. I'm confident that we should be below the six forty one that we were at um, for this year I mean for 16 so okay so that's it for the, the budget right the, yep right. I'm fine and with it if you guys are yep you everybody right. and with this just so people realize yes. what happens now is we've done this uh -huh. we pass the budget to the budget committee yes. yes correct and the budget committee is the one that makes the final budget correct, correct. that's the budget this is just our our um, Proposals to Our the budget proposals. committee. Proposals. And right. the budget committee then good? takes it and goes yeah. through it, and they, and they, the one that goes on the. Uh, they'll refine Sorry. it. Yeah, they'll refine it. Yeah. Okay, so now we got to do the default. Yes? Oh, the default. Yes. Yes, I forgot about the default. Forgot. Sorry, let's see. And the default budget is our budget. Yes, sir, that's correct. By statute. By statute. Well, the board in the town have authority over the default, but. It might not be the budget that 
we like all that much. Let's see the default budget in here. It doesn't have the paralegal or the town clerk positions because it can't have any new positions in it anyway. So all that has already been removed, you know, right. a lot of the things that you guys have done tonight. Um, and the default budget, I'm just trying to pull it up here, is $27,126,171. It's 1.08% above the 2017 budget. Right. And the default budget can register for people who are watching. Ma'am. Sir. <laughs> I'm thinking of her. As, you're as bad as I am. <laughs> it, it, it includes. That includes everything. It, it, it's last year's budget adjusted for statutory changes. Okay. Last it's year's easier budget to say that, yeah. Adjusted for statutory changes. Right. So that's that's sort of set. That, that accounts for the 1.08%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And we've all looked at it. We've all seen it. Yep. Yeah. That's changed a little because I also brought down the health insurance number in there, but it hasn't changed drastically from when you first received it. It's only gone down. Right. It has not gone up. Yep. It's lower than the one you received. Yes, yeah, it was. And yeah, it may have to be refined by the board later on, depending on what happens with the budget itself. Okay, so if we but vote tonight, does that make any difference? No, you can still vote to change it later if okay. it needs you just to be. You want to vote so that it can go into the uh, budget committee. Into the budget, votes, right, right. Trim? That's correct. Yeah. Needs needs to be in the budget for the budget committee. I make yeah. a motion that we approve the default budget as is to move to the budget committee. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Second. All in favor? Super. Okay. You're done. And do they need to vote on revenues or no? No, no, revenues are something that by statute are adjusted Correct. constantly. And they, they get adjusted so much that... <laughs> yeah, well, they're, they're even adjusted come September. And I, I think probably, maybe I ought to explain this, revenues are an estimate of what we think we're going to receive from various sources during the course of the year. When we get to setting the tax rate, right. those need to be completely reviewed against what we have actually received, and then it's prorated out for the continuation of that income money that's coming in on a regular basis, and that's entered into the tax rate computation. So that's something that can change from day to day, a week to week, a month to month. Yep. But the idea is for us to get as much revenue as possible into the into the tax rate so it, we can force those appropriation figures down. I was just changing them on Friday when I was speaking with Michelle Clark at right. DRA. We have since sent in the revised ones on September 1st, they're due, but then she also will take anything up as of to the day you set the tax rate. So she and I were making adjustments to revenue just the other day okay. to make it as beneficial to the taxpayers as you can because every piece of revenue helps offset your, bring your tax rate down a little bit. Right. So. Okay. That Closing was comment was more people getting their electrical on. Oh, good. Getting it turned oh, back good. on? That's good news, yeah. right? My wife didn't beat me yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, so I will get those uh, budgets put together and hopefully off to the budget committee sooner than later. Okay, that's good. Super. All right. Closing comments, Regina? Nothing, thank you. Rusty? Thank you to the public works and crews for what they did today, the fire, police. And Unicill, there's a lot of work out there, and yeah. I'm sure they still got a lot more to do. But. Yeah, when I left here today, I went to, went to Portsmouth, and we came back the back roads. There were just two random roads that we happened to hit. One of them was Wood Woodlam Road was closed, and the other one was Old Lock Road. I think I got the last announcement I received, which was about mid-afternoon, was that Lock Road was the only road that was closed at that time. All, all of the roads were open. So until sometime in mid-afternoon, we didn't have all of our roads open. Well, they had one uh, this afternoon where they found what pole that was leaning, oh, heavily shit. leaning and still charged. <laughs> so the fire and police were there and public works were going. I mean, Unitil was going to it. So. Yeah, they found a number of things as they went through the day that they hadn't expected to find. In right. one case, they had a very large limb balanced across the wires. Another thing happened to me today. Um, I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I got a call saying from Eversource saying that I didn't pay my bill and that they were coming 
and I could cut it off by, they'd be there within 40 minutes uh, and unless I call back with the credit card. So I called the number they gave and uh, the people just sounded weird. I hate to say it, they sounded like they weren't from Hampton or anywhere near here. And so I was reluctant to give the credit card and then I went and called up uh, you know, because they have changed the numbers on the on the uh, electric bills, so I, it took me a minute. To, and I have three electric bills, and uh, when I finally realized, and I knew I had just paid everything, and the person said that I owed four hundred and ninety something dollars, which I would never have owed that much. Yeah. So when I gave them the number, they said it was someone in New York, yeah. and they did mention the name of my business. They mentioned my first name. And when I asked them what exactly uh, uh, number that they were referring to, because I do have the three electric bills, they said, well, we can't tell you that because it's security. <laughs> so, but, but you can give us your credit card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. There are scams going around all the time. Well, there are bad, bad, bad ones. Between that and the, uh, the IRS, they're going to come and take oh, me away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please them, do. I told them I needed a vacation, so. <laughs> all right, nothing else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn at right. uh, 8.36. Second. All in favor? Good night. Good Thank you, Channel and 22. Max, that's what I was in the middle of when you called.